In this video, I'll go over everything there is to know about thermal evaporation plants. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I try to put out helpful content to help you with mods of all sorts, so subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below if there's anything you want to know about mechanism or any other mods and I'll try to make a video to help you out. When I make these videos, I assume you can use JEI, but if you can't, I'll be doing a video on that to explain how to use JEI on that, all that stuff. Um, I'll be doing that soon, so check the I card to see if that's ready for you. And if you find anything helpful, please leave a like down below. It really helps support my channel. Uh, and now let's go on and learn about thermal evaporation plants. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that I'm technically in a desert biome. So these have different effects depending on the kind of biome you're in. Hot biomes have a higher temperature and stuff. You'll understand that later. I just want to get that off first off so that if my numbers don't match up with your numbers, you know that that's why. But it could also be that if you're playing a mod pack, the mod pack developer has changed some, tweaked some things, you know, whatever. Just letting you know, putting that out there. Okay, so the smallest thermal evaporation plant is three blocks high. Uh, that's the exterior, so it's got to be three by four by four. So it's a four by four by three tall, smallest one. You don't need the top corners, but you can put them there. It doesn't matter either way. It doesn't affect the capacity or anything. Um, it just depends on how you want it to look. Now to build it, you need these thermal evaporation blocks and exactly one controller per thermal evaporation plant. Um, it won't work if there's more than one. And the thermal evaporation controller can go in any of the empty spaces you see here. It can go on the bottom. It can go on any of the sides. It just can't go on any of the edges at all. And these are the same places that you can put the valve. So the valve is how you put in liquids and pump out liquids. It's also how you pump in heat if you do that that way. I'll show you all about that in a minute. So like I said, three is the shortest thermal evaporation plant you can have. And the tallest one is 18 blocks high. Now that's the exterior. So the interior is 17 technically because this bottom one is solid. So basically in this chest I have stuff for this one, but I dropped out the, the top corners. Or this one, but I dropped out the top four corners. So if you want to do the smallest one, you need 35 thermal evaporation blocks and one controller. You can have any number of the valves switching out for those, but you remember you have to have the edges be the block. If you want the corner, that's four more for 39. It takes 12 more per layer, which means once you get up to the full 18 high size, you need 215 if you don't have the corners, or 219 if you do have the corners. So you set out a base like this. Uh, like I said, these four can be valves or the controller. I like to have my controller at eye level, so if I had dropped this one into the ground, I would have put this one higher. It doesn't really matter where it goes. And then I like to fill it in. And those red particles say that this worked. And as you can see, the heat is going up. The numbers I said uh, will be down in the description, so you don't have to scrub through this entire video every time. you got to check if you have the right amount of blocks. But again, 35 plus 1 controller or 39, and 215 plus one controller, or 219 plus a controller, if you want to have the corners filled in. So the difference between a three high and an 18 high, the three high has more uh, capacity, and it's more efficient, so it'll go, it'll pump out stuff faster. Basically it utilizes the heat better, because all of these um, blocks are hot, so everything on the surface area, I don't know the science, basically all the surface area makes it hotter and it makes it go faster is my assumption. So there are three kind of heat source blocks that you can add to your thermal evaporation plants to make them more efficient. You can add these advanced solar generators. Now the good thing about these is it's passive so you don't have to touch it really at all. Um, the downside is it does have a maximum level. So as you can see here in the desert it's 1.92 thousand Kelvin. Uh, it won't go any higher than this bar right here. Um, that's just the limit of what it is. You have to have one on all four corners or it won't work. Next up we have the least passive one. That's the fuel wood heater. This one requires fuel and it can give up to your maximum heat, the full bar, but it takes time. So for instance this one's off right now, as you can see. If we just put in some charcoal here. It's going to heat it up, but it's going to take a long time for it to get all the way full. However, once it's full, as long as you keep supplying it with charcoal, or any other fuel source really, it will 
keep up the temperature up to full. As you can see, it takes a while for this to heat up in this way. Um, I believe it's a logarithmic progression. So basically, the hotter it is, the harder it is to get a little more heat. But basically, if you let it sit, this will get up to whatever the maximum temperature is, I think. Um, like I said, it takes a long time. I mean, not that long if you just want to, if you want to have it running and just slowly getting better and better, then it's fine. Uh, but it requires fueling, so it's the most manual of these. And yeah, so that's the downside is you have to fuel it, but the upside is it can get way further than the solars can. Then we get to the best one in my opinion, which is the resistive heater. So this one requires RF power or U power, whatever power you're pumping in. Um, and as you can see right now, it's doing nothing. But if we go over here, we can set how much, uh, I guess it's FE, forge energy. That we're using. So if we put in 100 forge energy a tick, it's going to heat it up. And then if we go back in here, it's going to slowly heat it up. However, if you just want to do really quick, what is that, a million? Just do that real quick. Pump it in. Let it get up to full heat. If there is a full heat. And then, you know, just set it up back down to a thousand or whatever. Yeah, so that's a million Kelvin. You're not going to need to get that high. But you could, you know, give it a boost for a couple seconds and then have it wherever you want. It'll still slowly go up, I believe, but it will take a long time again. Uh, like I said, this is my favorite because you can pump in, you know, like I said, I'm pumping in 100, uh, oh, no, 1,000 um, FE a tick, which is RF a tick. And it's going to stay really high up for a long time. So now that we know everything about building it and what heat the heat sources are and all that, uh, we can go ahead and look at the um, what, what, what they're used for basically. So they have two uses in general. In some mod packs you might use it for other things too. But basically one is it turns water into brine and the other one is it turns brine into liquid lithium. Now this liquid lithium can be used to make these um, basic induction cells or these basic induction providers. And yeah, basically the output tank always has 10,000 millibuckets. So you want to output it into a tank that we, you're not waiting for so long. You can set it and forget it for a little bit, then use the lithium to make the thing, whatever, use the brine in your duplicating setup or duplicating setup or whatever, uh, link the I card. And yeah, so those are the two basic uses. The higher it is, the more efficient, like I said, um, these are obviously, using the heat resistive heaters. Anyway, if you got anything helpful out of this video, hit the like button down below and let me know what I should cover next. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Click here to see my video on thermal evaporation plants. And here's the video YouTube thinks is best for you. Pick one, they're both gonna be good videos. Subscribe right here and I'll see you next time.